you don't know the if you forgot the transformations, what can you do? So first of all, I want to go through actually a couple things with you guys um, on labeling this type of problem. All right, and. We don't need those parentheses in there. Um, but right in this case, I have 2 thirds equals x minus 1. Right? OK? So by looking at this example, y equals 2 thirds x minus 1, there's a couple things that I can do. And actually, this is what we're going to be calling a decay problem. And a lot of times when dealing with decay problems, um, we are able to understand that's decay because it's less than 1. But when we're just dealing with growth, a lot of times what we can do is remember, we can say that. 2 thirds to the x is equal to 3 halves to the negative x. You might say, well, well, why would we want to do something like that? Well, what's important, what's nice about doing something like that is we understand that the negative is going to tell us it's going to be a reflection. Because if you just plug that into your calculator, you say, why is the graph going in the other direction? Right? Why does the graph look like it's going down? All of the graphs we talked about were going up. The reason why it's going down is because if I rewrite it as a value a greater than 1, it, you can see it's written as a negative x. All right, So I'll show you how it's going to look. So those, therefore, those of you that graph it in your calculator, you're like, oh, OK. Um, ah. Okay, So you're like, negative x minus 1 in the parentheses, right? So now I've changed this to a negative. So therefore, this can be written, if I apply distributive property here, it's negative plus x plus 1. Then we have plus 3. So when we do a problem like this, what we need to do is we need to write out and say, all right, well, what are all my transformations? Okay, We know we have a positive 3. That means we're going to shift the graph up three units. Right? Whenever we're adding outside the parentheses, we shift the graph up three units. The next one, positive one. That tells us to shift the graph left one unit. Right? That's inside, you don't need the parentheses. But that's inside the function. That's a that's a exponent. So that's inside the function. So you drift the shaft to the left. And then this negative right here, that's going to tell you to reflect. Remember when we have a negative inside as a uh, when we have a negative as an exponent, that tells you to reflect about the y. When you have the when it's inside the function, it's going to be y. If this was if it was negative down below, it'd be the x-axis. So this is going to be reflect the y-axis. All right, so how are we going to graph them with all this information? Well, first thing, what I like to do is you can either graph them on the same or graph them on different, whatever really makes you feel comfortable. All right, the main important thing when we're talking about exponential functions, as I told you guys, I do not care what the base is. It does not matter what the base is when talking about using your transformations. Now, it's important to understand, is the base going to be is it, a, is it a growth problem or a decay problem? And that's why I switched it so a was greater than 1. So it's all going to be the same. It's all going to be growth. So in dealing with this, I know that my here is my parent function. Looks something like that. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my parent function and apply my transformations. So I shift the graph three units up. So instead of it crossing at 0, 1, it now crosses at 1, 2, 3, 0, 4. Instead of the graph, um, now the graph is going to be shifted one unit to the left. So instead of the y-intercept being at 0, 4, it's going to be a different value. But now I'm going to move that point one unit to the left. And then if instead of the graph looking something like this, I'm reflecting it over the y-axis. So now it's going to look something like that. All right. So does everybody kind of see what I did? Shift the, I just take the transformations, take the parent graph, 
take the transformations, and I just move the graph to where I want it. There's a couple things we want to remember, though. Remember, our asymptote is originally at y equals 0. So if I move the graph up three units, my asymptote now is at y equals 3. Yes? Wouldn't it cross at 4 since it goes up 3 and then 1 plus 3? It cross at 3? Because it's 0. It would, but remember what else we did? Is we sh oh, wait, that's supposed to be shifted to the Oh, yeah, OK. But then, down here, but remember, we shifted it to the left. So yes, if we didn't shift it left or right, it would cross at 4. But since we shifted that x-intercept to the left, now it crosses at some other different value. And what was that value? Oh, oh we didn't do a table of this. But it, yes, it would be at a different value. Okay, But it's not going to be at 4 because we moved that y-intercept one left. All right? That's it. Now, let's go and take a look at the domain and range. Domain is going to be all real numbers. Range, well, now you guys can see that the graph, it doesn't go down to 0. It doesn't even go down to 3. It approaches 3. So the range is from 3 to infinity. Cool? I thought that's pretty cool. All right, fine. I guess you guys just need some to try it on your own before you appreciate it. Um, on